thing? Yeah, I should be. Yeah, you are. Okay. Oh, good. I was confused because uh, usually on my Osmo, when I click record, it does a little beep, but it it didn't do it, but it says it's recording. I remember I turned it off because I was doing some filming and shooting some photographs for a children's hospital, a 3D art printing department. I don't need to get into it. It was fun and interesting. But I, there's these fellows and future surgeons practicing on models and I'm trying to get like Raid in their grill with the little Osmo gimbal. Yeah. And every time I, they're focusing on <laughs> the most intricate and complex maneuvers on these hearts. And all they hear is beep, beep, doop, like right in the ear of the Osmo. So I realized I had to turn it off. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Confused. There was so much brain power in that room. I was easily the least <laughs> intelligent there. Confused with the EKG beeping. <laughs> yeah. It's really throwing them great. off. It was great. How are you feeling today? I'm good. Uh, yeah. It's halfway through the week. Uh, nice to see you. That's a Rick Rubin thing, huh? I learned, you know, Rick Rubin. Yeah. I love him. He, I remember listening to him. I forget on which podcast it was, but it's the, you know, how people go through the motions. Hey, how are you? Oh, not too bad. Like good. Yeah. He's gotten in the habit of asking people. I don't know for how long he's been doing this, but how are you feeling? Hmm. Cause people can't really hide behind that question. I guess they could, but good. It's not as easy. So I've been trying to ask people that every now and then. Feeling, how are you feeling? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm good. I just, I got my annual physical tip top shape, great blood pressure. Oh, wow. Just everything's good. Everyone's excited to hear that because it means you'll be around for, I'll be around for a long time, but I always joke. Maybe Maybe some people aren't excited to hear that. Maybe I should put this on there, but I'm I'm a tall fella. Do you ever see a lot of, stop saying this. It freaks me out when you say this. (laughs) Do you ever see a lot of tall old people? Where did they you go? said this in Alaska, and then we had to go through the list of like the people we could name on one hand who were <laughs> none, zero, none. Where do they well, go? Well, listen, where do they you may be skewed. Listen, you may be skewed though because people of your height aren't that common to begin with. True. So, if the average age of death stays constant regardless of your height. Just not going to see that many you're just tall not people. Gonna, you already don't see that many tall people. I bet you the percentage is maybe still the same. So does that make you feel better? Tall yeah. people out there? Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Seth. I feel you're good very, about it. You're very welcome. <laughs> Today's episode is going to be interesting. We kind of hemmed and hawed about what we were going to do today. And then I said, hey, man, why do you still like photography? Yeah, just in our pre-conversation, <laughs> I think you were serious. And I was like, or, or you were like, let's press record as it came out. And I was like, yeah. I'm sold. Let's go. Yeah, why do you like photography? And it wasn't like a, you still like this? How? How are you? Like, it wasn't a negatively loaded question. I was just like, hey, man, why do you still like doing this? Five, four, four or five years later? Literally five years to the date just about. Well, it's important because you marked the date down. There's an interesting insight. Yeah. But you've been in this longer than many people, shorter than many people. Why are you still liking photography why is it still enjoyable how has it changed from when you started i think this is interesting because it'll cover the grounds for many people regardless of where they are in their photography journey whether they've just bought a camera and they're listening to this episode for the very first time it's their very first photography podcast episode and they're excited or they've been just slinging away at this for years and years and years we have people from all walks of life and of different experience levels and durations so why are you still doing this? Is it about the money? Is it a still about is it still about creative expression? Is it a game? Is it about Instagram? Is it about making connections? Where are you at now? Yeah, it's it's a great question and I I hope you answer it also in I this will. episode. Uh or I'll just talk the whole time and we'll do a part 2, but um <laughs> There's a lot of reasons why I still really like it, and I can I can name them off in. Uh, you you want me to just name them off, and then we'll dig into them, or do you want to yeah, go let's, one at a time? Let's skim the surface of each one, and okay. then I'm going to do the host's duties of getting nuanced and into the the details. And before I say that, yep, this is I think the intent behind this is so that people listening 
who are maybe at a point where they're struggling with motivation or they're at a point where they're not struggling with motivation. They're super enthusiastic and it's just more fuel to keep going and progressing and get better. It's, I think we'll be successful at covering both those vantage points, but I just wanted to define an intent so that it's not just kind of aimless. Nice. Uh, yeah. So like I said, five years mark the date only because I've looked back at my Instagram profile and just sort of remembered over the time when I posted my first thing in terms of not my first picture ever taken. I've always been interested in photography. I've always bought like a little camera or, Oh, digital cameras are a thing. I'm going to buy. I had one that you put a literal floppy disc in. I mean, the picture quality must've been four megapixels like you you put a floppy disk into it a huge (laughs) digital camera when they first came out so i was always interested in uh cameras and photography um so that's that's that uh when i really started though i would say five years ago where i was like oh i'm gonna start an instagram around this hobby and that's a pretty that's a pretty big step on its own to say you're going to start an Instagram solely around a hobby. I think that shows that you're really into something and that's what you want to share. It's not even about necessarily your own life at that time or things like that. It's very dedicated to your craft. Uh, So number one, I think it's really cool to see growth over a time period. Like, like a very concrete time period, which is five years to be like, where was I when I first started? I was nowhere to where am I today? Like making money from the thing occasionally. That's cool. A podcast about photography, taking on many guests, having conversations about it, kind of being obsessed about it for uh, five years and having this outlet to talk about it. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and I think the, the pressure in a good way to get out and move. And that's something that pre photography, I got a little stagnant with travel. It always seemed a little stressful. It always seemed a little bit too much money. It always seemed a little bit like a hassle and photography has really gotten me past that hurdle and back to enjoying travel, which I did a bunch as a kid up until about 20. And then there was sort of this hiatus and then like 35 on started getting into it a bit more. So I think the camera really gets me to go to pretty exotic places where I'm not sure I would go without sort of the tie to like photography and getting those images and having the excitement of seeing those places. Uh, yeah, that's, that that's sort of a, a round rounding it up in terms of why do I really like this? Um, furthermore, I really like the craft of learning these little tricks. Like yesterday I was editing a few photos of my pup and I figured out something new. So there's this constant well, learning. It? I, I like doing sometimes depending on the photo, I like, exaggerating the S curve in terms of the shadows, pulling up the shadows. It it creates like this matte sort of finish on all the dark things. But sometimes I don't like that across the entire photo. So what I noticed for the first time, call me a dumb dumb. I don't know. But when you put a mask on, you can do that same S curve for just where you're masking. So if you this is Lightroom or you yeah, this is Lightroom. I'm in Lightroom. Mm-hmm. So if I put a radial mask over my subject and invert it, everything but let's say the dog's face is in the masked area and it's feathered in. And then I can S curve the background and keep the subject very clear. So it was just a little thing. It's nothing crazy, but I was like, Oh, that, that helps with this concept of editing. Neat. I can't wait to try that on some other subjects. So I I think (laughs) that's a shirt right there. Neat. I think uh, the constant learning, let alone, I'm even talking about video and like Premiere, but the constant learning in Photoshop and 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 doing different and cool things, uh, whether it's tutorials or you figure something out by accident or you have a new style that you really like, 
the creative endeavors are great. Uh, with that said, any product stuff that I do is always a challenge to like, how do I make this different than the, the usual thing? Uh, and I get, I can get stuck, but I like to reach outside of the box and be like, I want to, I want to try something completely different, uh, and, and push myself to think of concepts or ideas, uh, to execute and, and create a, a cool visual, uh, visual period. So that, uh, adding to that, the people that I've met along the way, that it's a really cool community. It's, it's unlike any other community. Uh, I think, I don't know. I I think photography is like an individual thing, but it's also, it's really inviting for let's all go to a place and do our own thing. And we can kind of be together, but separate still. And that's, that's tricky. You can't invite 20 musicians, you know, over to a stage and all try to play it. Like it's just more difficult to be on the same page or do your individual thing in the same spot. I think photography lends itself to like a really nice creative bonding thing where you're not getting in the way of each other, hopefully. Mm. So that's been a nice experience. I've made lots of friends through this and uh, with like passions, you can plan trips and you understand each other. I, I get, we get texts all the time from, you know, people, Taryn was on the show. Be like, Hey, uh, you know, you want to go shoot for some fall stuff, some fall content, uh, you know, just things like that where it's like, um, you just have those people that want to jump in and do the same thing that you're doing. Uh, and that's, that's really fun too. Uh, so, I think that kind of rounds it out. I'm sure we'll uncover some other things that I forgot off the top of my head. What did you hear me typing furiously? Furiously. Everyone on YouTube's just thinks I'm texting and not paying attention. Yeah. It's hard, folks. It's hard to take in what you're saying, prepare what I'm going to say. Oh, well, writing down points. Yeah, it is. It's difficult. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Poor me. So let's rewind. I have so many questions that I'm, I'm going to share this isn't just going to be a one-sided interview, but let's, let's rewind really far back. That was very well spoken. Nice monologue. Thank you. How are you, you said, you know, watching your progress has been fun and you're, I think you actually said growth. I'm not sure. I did. This is such an ambiguous term and I think people can get very confused or frustrated on what this is growth. How are you and you in italics, you specifically, I just mean everybody listening will measure this the same way, but maybe it is inspiring or uninspiring. How are you measuring growth for you? For me, how do you know you're not stagnating? Well, let's ask it that way. Yeah. I think I think there's a few spots where you can get to where you feel pretty confident about your skill level or capabilities. Let's, let's put it that way. Um, I by no means am the best photographer or the most skilled or the most technical, nor musician, nor golfer, nor any hobby I've ever done. However, I do through repeating sort of a blueprint of practice and obsession and time and effort and networking, patting myself on the back, but can have taken things to a certain point where people are willing to pay for that service or skill. So to me, that is a huge checkpoint. And it's not one that everyone has to achieve or get to or want to get to. That's fine. But for me, that is a huge checkpoint of like, you've gotten far enough that people are paying you decent money to do your skill. Right. Can I interrupt? Yeah. Because I think I know where you're heading. And what you're talking about is you have developed a checkpoint level of skill. You start at something unskilled, then you become skilled. And I think where I've interrupted you at is you're on the quest for mastery. 
And then from mastery, you hit virtuosity, if ever. I think those are the four stages of any interest, profession. Unskilled, skilled, mastery, virtuosity. I think I heard this or something like it on Huberman Lab, and I was like, that's brilliant. Yeah, as he often is. Uh, yeah, I, I think there are those stages, uh, and that's one of the checkpoints. Um, I, don't, I don't even like to say I've, I'm at a mastering stage, but skilled enough where I have a skill that certain people don't, and then they want that skill or that uh, the fruit of that skill, whether it be photos or video or what have you. So seeing that growth is... Now, listen, like like music, I started when I was six years old. Um, so that's a little muddier in terms of how long it took to get to a place where, again, I, I ride my buddy's coattails a lot. He has a tremendous musical sense. Um, but together, we create a a duo, <laughs> quite literally, uh, yeah. and sometimes with a band. Uh, but we're able to go out and play music and people pay us and people cheer and people like it and some people might hate it i don't know but overall the response is pretty good and and that's great am i a virtuoso no not at all but i know Are you a master i don't know i i'm a master at what i know? i'm a master at what i here's <laughs> a here's an interesting here's an interesting point well because we're gonna go somewhere with this i'm, I'm interested to hear your thoughts go ahead i'm, I'm a master at where my skill set is and exploiting it to the best possible way. So for example, am so I the, if I'm hearing you correctly, you have a masterful, is that a word? Masterful? You have a sure. level of mastery in your ability to identify where you are skilled and how you can apply that to achieve an outcome, whether that's a boost in finances or creative expression, et cetera. Yeah, I don't typically fly too close to the sun. So, for example, in the music analogy, and I'll try to find one for photography, but music, I, I just know very well in terms of my skill level or my skill set. I'm not, I'm not super fast at guitar. I'm not ripping and riffing and and flying through solos. I don't know the fretboard like virtuosos do. I don't. But I, I do know there's certain things that are within my control that I can control my sound quality, what my amp sounds like, what pedals I use, what guitar strings I use, what guitar I use, playing the right notes or good notes, not being too, uh, taking too many chances, but occasionally. So you keep learning and pushing yourself, but not trying to do things that you're not good at doing. So I stay within my box and push the edges when I can and when I have time and when I want to learn something new or take a new step or or break that next plateau that's important knowing about plateaus let's get back to that write that one down mm. knowing where your plateaus hands are, are going to fall off <laughs> knowing where your plateaus are and and pushing yourself beyond them I know how to create an enjoyable enjoyable experience with my skill set now in photography same sort of thing like I, I am confident in certain genres and certain areas where I can create a, a story, a narrative, a visual that tells a story. Maybe a caption has to be tied to it to really tie it all together, but putting it all together, I feel like sometimes I can, I can do that and do that well. Again, do I have the nicest lighting equipment? Do I have the nicest cameras and lenses? decent they do the job they're not holding me back but it's more about like the the skill and understanding where you are and where you can deliver uh and there's a lot more to photography in terms of business and skill than just the photos and the editing there's speed delivery going above and beyond there's mm -hmm. communications there's networking there's uh being friendly there's being kind, like there's a whole bunch of things that go into you as a photographer wants to be hired and people want to work with you over and over again. So I think incorporating all that stuff has been an absolute learning curve in a tight time frame. Five years to now is five years is five years, but 
it is, uh, it's very clear for me to look back and see like, where was I and where am I now and where could I potentially keep going? So I think that condensed timeline helps me to see, and that's exciting. And to answer your question from the beginning, why do I still like it? Cause it's like, it's fun. It's a game. It's, it's building and growing. Yeah. Wow. All, all good stuff. I want to return back to that, those categories of unskilled, skilled mastery and virtuosity. Very few of us listening, if any, will be in the, the, the mastery and virtuoso category. I am not saying it's impossible. It just takes a long time and I feel like many repetitions to get there. So question for you, how do we know we've moved far enough along that spectrum to say that we've graduated from unskilled to skilled? It's not a binary. Well, I was unskilled. Now I'm skilled. So for people looking to maybe identify where they are, am I unskilled or am I skilled? And before your ego takes a huge punch, we're all unskilled when we start, right? Yeah. And some of us, it takes us longer to become skilled. Others pick it up quicker. You know, we're all in our own timeline. Are the indicators, oh, I'm getting paid for this, so I must be skilled. Uh, I think I'm skilled. <laughs> Just the, <laughs> the, the fact of thinking you are. What, what do you think about this? I think you find yourself in the beginning. I'm thinking back. You ask yourself a lot of questions. The more questions you're asking per day about photography, the less skilled you are. Are you sure? Hold on. Hold on. I may disagree, and I'm going to let you rephrase if needed. Yeah. But I feel like I'll be asking questions at the same constant rate for the remainder of time. No, you're not. (laughs) What do you mean? When you first picked up a camera, you're like, this will be an interesting debate for people listening. I feel like my curiosity and questions will always remain constant regardless of my skill level. And I feel like that's what progresses you along the path of skill, mastery, virtuosity. I don't think think you ask less questions as you go along those things or my misunderstanding. Uh, uh, well, maybe you constantly do, but I would expect you, I would expect you to be way further along if you're asking the same amount of questions every single day. No offense. Ow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I I I, I kid. <laughs> but I think when you're right starting in the comments people on Spotify. This is I, this is the debate. I think when you start off, I'm just thinking about holding a camera for the first time. What's this button? What's what's the I put it to camera or video or M or what's A V mean? What's S mean? What's P uh-huh. mean? What's what's the C one function button? How do I do? What's the me, the? I don't you, even know the answers to those. How do I work this? Well, you go you go through so many things, and you have to re ask. Wait, what's what's the exposure triangle again? What's exposure do? What does what shutter speed? What should I do for a, a waterfall? I'm going to look that up. What do I do for night photography? I'm going to look that. What do I do for sports? You're, you're constantly trying to figure out all the things. Now, as you figure them out, those low level main questions start to disappear. Like, I'm not going to yes. text you, hey, man, what shutter speed do again? Like that question is gone and it's yes. now, now turned into a skill where it wasn't a skill. I get shutter speed. I'm calling that a skill, you know? So guy, what you're, what you're talking about is the tiering or level of questions diminishes <laughs> as you progress. And I'm saying the number of questions separate from quality or not quality because every question is a good one depending on where you're at but the 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 tiering system so in your your waterfall example at this stage if i'm in front of a waterfall maybe i'm not asking what my settings need to be to have a long expo long exposure now i'm asking myself other kinds of nuanced questions like how can i photograph this waterfall in a way that has never been done based on the photos I've seen? Or how can I incorporate this? Like the questions change. I don't think they decrease. Yeah. Okay. Well, yes. I'm, I'm talking 
questions that have like a scientific answer where you're learning the skill. So knowledge-based questions as opposed yeah, to application? You, yeah, you're you're talking like creative questions. Yourself. Well, you're talking creative questions and and it, questions think, are questions, no? I think if we had a actual scientific data base on how many questions we ask about photography or any skill that you're starting off, there's going to be more in the beginning because I I'm thinking, listen, I'm, I'm just my, again, everyone, my perception, my experience. Get them. <laughs> <laughs> when I first started photography, I'm watching tons of YouTube. I am talking to people. I am, I am looking up things daily. I'm trying things. I want to go do this sort of photography. I want to go try this photography. I want to try to figure out all the aspects of the waterfall photography. Well, what's that mean? Well, what's that mean? Well, what's that mean? Day to day now. I'm I'm not asking myself a, there could be days where I don't pick up a camera or think about it because I'm just doing other things and those skills don't have to be filled in. Now, as something comes up, uh, a job comes up, I might refresh or figure things out or do a refresher on astrophotography. Mm. I do that maybe once every I don't know, two or three months I take pictures of stars. There's times where I'm like now what's the white balance supposed to be? Am I supposed to make this cooler in camera? Like what's the suggestion? Okay. They want it at this Kelvin. Uh, all right. Uh, or what's a good ISO to start at and then go from there. What's the thing on drifting of the stars based on my, uh, focal length. Like mm -hmm. you, you can refresh and do things, but I think the overall skills that you build in the beginning, there's just so much of the little stuff that you, that you need to know. You pick up a guitar, you're really going to be focusing on what are the strings of the guitar. It's A or E A. See, I don't even know. E A D G B E. Can't play guitar. I know. E A D G B E. And you're like, all right, now I don't think about it. So that's why I just messed up. I don't I'm not thinking about it or asking or figuring it out. So I just think in the beginning there's a there's a waterfall to so you use that pun, uh, a Oof. waterfall of uh, <laughs> questions and ideas and concepts and unskilled things that you have to figure out. And almost like you're cramming and studying, you keep asking yourself the same stuff and figuring out the same sort of stuff in different ways, in different settings, waterfall versus astro, similar settings, maybe, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of certain aspects, sports versus wildlife, similar settings in different aspects. Oh, right. I'm, I'm getting these applications in different areas. So I think I agree that the complexity changes. So if there was a value of complexity times frequency, it might be equal because your complex questions might not be as much or as often, but they're more complex and deep. So the value, if we're putting them together might be, but I, I would bet, and you, when did you start photography? How old were you? Oh. Uh, I want to say like 20. Yeah. So 20, 10 years ago. Yeah. Well, here's something interesting. So while we've been talking about this, I've of course been listening and writing notes and this is very, very fascinating to me. People can probably hear the enthusiasm in my voice. So I, I, always keep up my AI program. Just not that it's, you know, gospel. It's just interesting to, uh, pose questions to LOMs. Right. So I asked my, uh, AI program, do questions decrease as our skill level increases, stay constant or increase? This was the response. That's an intriguing question as skill levels increase the nature and frequency of questions can change in several ways. So here's the argument for decreasing. Initially, as you become more proficient at something, you might find that basic questions decrease because you've mastered foundational skills and concepts. They could stay constant as skill level increases. Your questions might remain constant as you continue to encounter new challenges and seek to refine your skills. The questions may shift from how to why or to what if, focusing more on deeper understanding and creative exploration. 
Here's the argument for increasing. As you advance, you might ask for more complex and nuanced questions. With greater skill, you often become more aware of subtleties and possibilities, leading to a curiosity-driven increase in questions about advanced techniques, creative expression, and innovation. So to come back full circle to our question of identifying, am I unskilled or am I skilled? Based on, I feel like, what we've talked about and this interesting response from a prompt, if you're asking yourself how questions more than why or what if, I think maybe you're more, you haven't developed the skills yet. Whereas if you're asking why, what if, or more nuanced questions about advanced techniques, you already have to have that foundational knowledge and you probably have a larger skill set. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. That's right in the comments. A, maybe AI, AI I smart. love when people disagree. I like hearing other opinions or maybe you're totally nodding your head or you're shaking your head thinking that we're have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> well, that's possible too. <laughs> it really is. We never said we were skilled podcasters. We're still working on it. <laughs> that's funny. We're asking how to click. Well, we're not asking how to click record. Right. We have our, we have we're, our, the, you and I are definitely in the what if phase. What if we did this? Yeah. How can we do better. We ask that constantly. Yeah. Anywho, so, so to me that, but I agree with the AI. Uh, I think they said it more depth and agree with them for when they take control, you want to be on their side. Yeah. Right. I, I, I hope they hear this. Much kind AI. <laughs> Please remember this when you take over the world and spare my life. Here's a Snickers bar. Do they said, eat? Thank you very much. Know. Kind AI. Yeah. You're very welcome. <laughs> I'm on the good list now. <laughs> Thank goodness. Someone is. Someone is. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I think as you grow, you, the questions change, maybe the frequency in terms of depth, like we said. Um, I think that's one That's one signal. Uh, I think there's external factors too uh, that, that start to come into play. Uh, you know, social media has its purposes and that's definitely one of them to give sort of a nudge. Uh, it definitely in the beginning for me was a huge nudge in terms of, Hey, I like this. Hey, that's a cool photo. Hey, that sucks. Oh shoot. And that that makes me, nobody says that though. That's why I don't like social media as a, it's not a good sounding board. I feel like for Uh, not on social, but you, you get friends that do. I had friends in the beginning that were like, I would try this. Yeah. So it's more intimate relationships, all the surface level comments like fire, bro, or this is amazing. We all know that it's just nobody, nobody is going to tell you, Hey, this sucks. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And I think that was diluted, especially when we started, when, uh, well, you started before me, but when I started off and we were part of like those groups that you're, yeah, you're like know. in common in each other, like it's just some of the, it's just automatic. Now I, I get way less comments on things, but I feel like they're genuine. But if someone's oh, taking, you, the, taking I've, the I've time. started a new uh, comment. It's my go-to comment now. So if you receive one from me and you're listening, it's truly sincere. I wrote, I think I've, I just right now, this is a good photo. <laughs> Period. Yeah. Straight up. I Two like points. this photo <laughs> with proper punctuation. Hey, I like this set. Great job. I did that, I think, most recently on one of Dusty's photos. who has been on the show a couple times. Uh-huh. And I wasn't, I, at first I was like, oh, maybe people are going to think this is like sarcasm because it's so... It's it's structured uncommonly and simple in how simplistic it is, mm-hmm. but it it was it registered how it was supposed to. So I was like, "Phew, I am good, not an asshole." No. Well, let I'm, me ask you this: Is this true? If you're not getting better, are you getting worse? In other words, if you're staying the same, are you getting worse? That's a tricky one, man. I think. I think putting things down sometimes can propel you forward. Ooh. So we talked about plateaus. Yeah. It's, it's tricky in the balance. It's tricky in staying at it, but not if you do something so many times, if you do it every day, so many times you fall into patterns 
that then become automatic. Everyone out there can relate to editing a bunch of photos and you go through the same system. This is how I edit. I do my split tone here. I do this color here. I make my S curve the same exact. You just go right down the list of things to do. I throw into Photoshop, like whatever your method is, you start to become on autopilot. And that you're not necessarily going backwards. But sometimes taking a break where you have to relearn something, it's like, it's kind of like, I don't yeah. know, ripping off the, sc the scab and then rehealing and with like new fresh skin. Like it's, it's coming back in a different way. And there's, there's a musical quote that goes like, if you're soloing or improvising, nothing that yesterday taught me, meaning you took a break from playing and when you play a lot and you play night after night, you get into patterns of like, I'm going to do this solo on this move. If you forget because it's taken some time, you might run into something new. You might try something different. You might forget and make a mistake. And in art, sometimes a mistake can be like a great new discovery. Mm. So I think yeah. stepping aside and allowing yourself to refresh and have to search like how do i shoot astro again and now you come a, a, upon because you have to search a new article that gives you like this really cool editing tip or or thought and you're like oh i just learned something new because i wasn't too comfortable mm. so putting yourself out of comfort more so than like are you stagnant and falling back might be a key to keeping the excitement, like trying new subjects, trying new things. We talked last week about expanding your, your niche and, and really not being locked into one thing. Maybe that's all part of it. Even if you don't post stuff, like I'm going to go try to do portraits with a friend. Um, I don't, I only do wildlife usually, but it's similar. It's a, it's a being, uh, let me see if I can incorporate some of my skills and I hear you and do stuff to, Try something new, whether it's like contour on the face or uh, fixing up, you know, the skin texture or what have you. Like just looking that stuff up might help you within the thing that you really love. Maybe it's an now you're editing your animals and you're like, hey, I'm going to try that technique that I did for lightening the eyes on a portrait mm -hmm. that I saw that I happened to run into. Now I'm going to try it on my fox. Holy crap, that looks good. Yeah, I, you know? I know exactly. I can relate in this moment exactly now to what you're talking about. Cause you know, what happens every time this year on the East coast? Is it fall Seth for, for 200 fall? <laughs> it is. And Bucket it's so beautiful. Bucket. It's so beautiful. Bucket. And your whole Instagram grid is fruity pebbles and rainbows and beautiful stuff. And, and pumpkin spice. It's amazing. And the, the photography and the videography is incredible. And I, I have nothing, I have mostly nothing but good things to say about it. For me on a personal level, fall has gotten to this point where it's like, oh my God, I got to figure out when the peak is and I got to drive over to, this is going to be a, a, a good spot to get these colors. And you, even just me describing, you can hear my voice, how frantic it has become. And I, I, I've kind of lost the fun of fall. So... This season, I've taken a break from fall. Everybody who's not on the East Coast who wants to shoot East Coast colors instantly hates me. They're like, how could you not? I'm not saying I haven't shot any fall colors, but you know what my focus has been? Speaking on you know, taking a break and looking at other things. Also at this time of year, the ground's really wet, right? Right. Mushrooms sprout up. Go on. And... I'm super fascinated by fungi. I have the field guide in the next room and tried growing some, not the crazy, not the ones that make you see stuff, just <laughs> edible ones that Thank you, for you put in your omelets. Mm. And I've spent, I think the last few weeks going out for walks, bringing my camera and stopping every time I see a new mushroom and taking pictures of those. And I've had so much fun. And then bringing those photos back into Lightroom, 
you're speaking about being on autopilot, like da, 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 I do this, I do that, I do that. My new thing has been, well, always kind of has been, but even more so is like, what does this photo need? Does this photo need that autopilot S curve? Q turn this way? Like, no, does it even need sliders moved? No. Okay. Well, I'm just going to leave it how it is because it doesn't need anything. I think right. you can get into that habit of this is how I edit. So this is how I got to do it. And I, and you get into this position where you have to make your own style work and you're chasing your own tail. Yeah. That's a you good know? point. So I've gone into this habit of, does this photo need my protocol? No. What does it need? Anything? And just asking those questions. But taking a break from fall has gotten me to shoot other things. I've enjoyed just seeing the colors with my own eyes. I've been appreciating, you know, walking around and taking it in with my, my eyeballs. You know, I heard a fact that uh, studies show that if you take pictures aimlessly, so without intent, you're, like, you're not focused, you're just firing off thousands of photos, uh, it reduces your ability to recall memories about the experience later in life. Huh. It's like all those people at the concert with their phone up. Yeah. will struggle in memory tests to recall it's the experience. So have intent when you shoot. Yeah. I know I yeah. just mentioned no. like tons of different concepts, but it got me thinking what you were saying that about taking breaks from editing and but you hit that's a, what it's been for me this fall. You hit a you hit a really interesting point where we I mean seasonally I guess there's pressure from fall, but more so there's been in we we used to joke about it that like in i don't know five years ago it was normal fall pr- presentation of photos when fall happened then the next year it was like september mid-september and we're like wait a minute that's not right and then the year after it's like late august like people start posting fall stuff and we're like good lord like this this has just become like a race, right? A race to get the fall photos mm-hmm. that aren't actually accurate. They're last year's photos, which is fine, but it's like, um, it's sort of misleading and falls really confusing. If you're looking at Instagram and you have vacations planned, it's like stressful because it's like, wait, that's where I'm going. Oh, is that peak? Oh no, that's last year's photo. <laughs> it's, oh. digital ha- it's digital Halloween. People start decorating at all different times of the year and you don't yes. know. Imagine, wh- imagine not knowing when Halloween was and you just walked into different neighborhoods. Is it now? Yeah. Is it, was it last week? Is it this week? That's what Instagram is with fall. Or imagine not knowing what Halloween is. You, you're coming from a different country <laughs> and you're like looking at people's yards and you're like, what the actual is going on here like what is happening this is freaky i want to move back it's a a foliage avalanche because it's like it'll it'll be september 25th and you're like there's a fall photo "Hmm." and it's just a domino effect was it a rainy season "Hmm." people are starting people are starting to put out their fall stuff maybe i should start building up my my war chest in the drafts Um. I'm craving a pumpkin spice. And then nothing is in nothing is in real time. It's just I've just kind of been turned off by the whole thing and I needed a break this year. I was like I'm just going to go take pictures of mushrooms and Yeah, there you go. Uh I'm a big fan of the every other fall, maybe every other 3 years. Once you get a few good spots, like it it's become yeah. crazy. I I took a drive a dr- uh, I took a drive. Yeah, that's took right. A drive. I took a, a drive last year uh Oh, I remember this. Dude, you were furious. I, I just wanted to take a quick drive. It's three hours to the White Mountains. I got caught on the one road that everyone in the world was on. I was in the car for 10 hours that day, and I'm not kidding. I like this perspective of it's everyone else, and I'm not a part of it. I wanted to get out of it so bad. <laughs> I I punched myself for being a part of it. I, you deserved it, didn't you? Yeah, and and not again, <laughs> not again, buddy, not again, uh, not happening. Uh, but yeah, it's listen, yeah. it's a pressure, and it is what we talked about last week. Are you being pressured to take photos because everyone else is? That's just it, and I recognize that. I was like, am I going? Am I am I going to take the drone off or drive to this place because I want to and I'm excited, or is there like uh, is there this force where it's you should be doing this? It's that time of year. You should be, you know, that thing we all hear. And I was like. No, no, no. I'm trying to have count- counterculture with my own brain often and with society when it makes sense. 
Yeah, and very fall. much a counterculture person to a degree. Go fall. left when everyone's going right. Just you know, fall photos. Fall photos are violent. They're like violent to edit. It's like there's a lot going on. What do you it's mean? Just, you just go to saturation and you pump it to a hundred <laughs> and you publish it. I'm gonna make a reel about that. Yellows poof, all the way. <laughs> Greens poof, all the way. <laughs> then you get to the lookout and it's just all evergreens. You're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> damn it. How am I going to do this in Photoshop? Just devoured. Forest devoured by the emerald ash borer. There's nothing left. Yeah. So I I don't know. It's, it's well, and here's the other question too, right? Right. Uh, we should not plan episodes more often because I'm having, I always have fun, <laughs> but I'm having a lot of fun right now. Uh, <laughs> so the other question was, so I have these canoes that I need to photograph and do a video storyboard for, which I'm in the process of right now. I had that shoot at the the uh, Children's Hospital, which I mentioned at the start of this episode. I don't know if that was too early in the intro. Mm-hmm. My Where I'm going with this is, yeah, fall is pretty. I'm not at a stage in my career where people know this, where posting fall bangers on Instagram is priority. Like I need to pay my bills. I need to progress my career. So what are pretty fall photos this season going to do for me? Other than people be like, "Atta boy, those are sick. No, no disrespect to people who are doing that. But just like for me right now, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's low on the priorities. So I had that. What is this really ultimately doing for me other than, I, I don't know. No, if you got a fall gig and they wanted a fall vibe, then you would. And I'm not saying that's the only criteria to go out and shoot things is if you're getting paid or there's monetary compensation. You, you gotta it. like it. You gotta like it. If yeah. you don't if you don't love it and you'd rather look for animals or do portraits do or do it's whatever. Moose. It's the moose rut. I didn't even do that. And the elk rut. Yeah. Well, like do what you want to do and do what you gotta do. And this goes yeah. back to I think we've touched on this a few episodes ago. I just didn't want to. Not in like a lazy way. You know, we talk about that balance when you don't want to do something, don't do it, but also don't have, don't be lazy. Don't be lethargic. This wasn't a, uh, it's a lot of work. It's like, I just really don't want to do that right now. Like I want to do other things at this current stage and I'm not going to be guilted or shamed by myself or the influence of people I don't even know on Instagram to make me go out and shoot a certain way or a certain thing. I'm just not going to partake. Which is no. hard to do. And we're talking and, about it because there was obviously a a riff there that I had to get over. Yep. Yeah. And so. the the truth, the truth of fall is like no other season or event. We've seen it for the last five years. Fall photos have a spike. And people won like that lotto effect we talk about. There's been a handful of people that have gotten great attention for great photos, nonetheless. But we all saw it. We all saw like this increase in exposure and people liking follows, feature accounts, all this stuff. And it, I think everyone kind of saw that and was like, Oh, I got to go do that thing. I got to go do it. I got to go do that earlier. I got to beat people next year. I'm going to save these photos to, and post earliest next year so I get the features. Like it became a sort next of Next year it's February they're coming out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it probably just won't stop. Just it's June and it's fall. Well, then you get into March, like how, how far does that ball fall. roll? You get into like a KJP type thing where it's mm-hmm. all year round and then you can get even further into the concept of who are you making content for? Uh, yeah. Who, you can spiral is my point. I'm not, if you want to go shoot fall and, and you're excited and you're doing an awesome job at it, I am so stoked for you. Fall's awesome. Have fun. Just like do your thing, right? Don't be like, everybody's doing it. I got to do it. Got to do it. Like, do you want to do that? Is that exciting to you? Is it a drag to drive out? to morning light at six in the morning with your drone and you're like, Oh, I got to do this. It'll be good for my career. Will it? Maybe, maybe not. Just think about it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. There's, there's people that do great stuff. We're not, we're not poo pooing on it. And there's people that do this similar stuff all the time in the summer, winter, fall, 
that's what they love and you can see it. But again, I think it's to Seth's point, if you're, if you're being forced out, then, uh, maybe just reconsider or like, you know what, do whatever you gotta do. <laughs> if you like it, if you don't like it, if you yeah. want to do it, uh, have fun, make some bangers, have fun. I think at some point, if you don't truly love it in your heart, you'll be right where we're sitting. You might be like, screw you guys. I want to, I, I want to see fall and experience it. And that's great. Do it. I think if it's not a true, true passion, you'll see in a few years that it fades away. We talked about it last time, fall back into who you really are, fall mm-hmm. back into who you are. And th- I think that's just Seth's experience. It's been my experience a bit with fall. I like fall, but I'm done doing the, the cattle race. Um, 10 hour drives to get nowhere Mm -hmm. and not only fall back into who you are, find out who you are. Yeah. You know, you can find out a lot about who you are by going the opposite direction. I've that's advice I would give to myself at a very, at a much earlier age. I realize I'm still young before people roll their eyes. I'm just saying that I, that, that is advice that it would be very applicable to earlier version of me. So yeah. I still have points written from your original yeah, let's get, let's get back. soliloquy. Let's take the train. Let's take the train. <laughs> have you always enjoyed learning? I realize not everyone is like us. We're both curious people. Yeah, we both like to learn a lot. It would be ignorant to think that everybody just loves learning all the time and everyone is like us. We understand that's not the case. Have you always liked and enjoyed learning? I know I didn't. And... If no, how did you learn to like learning? I don't know if I like, like, I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge reader. I have to really be in the mood to, to read. Um, I've read plenty of books. I am. Like YouTube but, podcasts. Sure. Yes. Experience. Uh, yeah. More experience based things or, or nonfiction. Uh, I like, more than learning, I would say is, and I guess it is learning. It's a form of it is f- I like figuring things out. Uncovering. Yeah. I like figuring things out. So whether it's a skill, whether it's being a better athlete, um, whether it's working on running or mountain climbing or rock climbing or lifting weights, healthy eating habits, uh, good. I just like f- like trying to uncover and figuring things out, uh, how to, how to edit in Lightroom, how to use Premiere. Like those things are exciting. How to, how to get the greatest tone I possibly can on a guitar. Like just trying to figure those things out. That's really fun to me. Uh, creating a narrative, executing a a video idea, making a, a reel that hits and works and like all that stuff, figuring stuff out is a learning process and a doing process. Maybe it's the doing that I really like too. Uh, more so than like actually learning, but you learn from doing so, but the doing like the being active, having your brain focused, I, I always think it's like an active meditation. They talk about you can meditate while you're walking, like really concentrate on your left foot hitting your right foot, hitting the feelings of the pavement, focusing on that one thing. That's a meditation. I think golfing for five hours is a meditation because I get super focused on the round. I think going out to hike and do a sunset uh, photograph is a meditation because I'm really focused on getting there on time, the hike, where we're going, setting up, finding the composition all the way back to like editing it. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a nice, uh, it's a nice use of the brain and keeps it from that monkey brain of you scattered all over the place of a bunch of like, what ifs, or I should be doing that or what should I do? All right. I should be, I, I gotta do my laundry. And then I gotta like that whole brain thing that can be overactive at times, um, is I think the part that I enjoy about the doing and yeah, the same thing with photography from the beginning. And that's again why why I still like it. New lenses, new equipment, new settings, learning uh about video and the the right frame rate versus the ISO, the native ISO, like learning all that stuff on how to do things the best that you can. That's that's what gets me going. 
Yeah, I think it's important to, I guess, distinguish the difference between learning and, as you put it, figuring things out. Those are close, but they have subtle differences, I think. So I guess like learning would be acquiring the knowledge through a podcast, through a book, through a YouTube video, some kind of formal version of study. And then figuring things out would involve, you know, independ- independently solving those problems. Uh, going out and actually applying those things. And I think it's that that's just it, right? It's a, you can't just learn and you can't just figure things out. But if we're using these definitions, you have to get the, the structured methods from a source and then you have to take those, go out and apply them. I think I was listening to a podcast with Alex Hormozzi. Mm-hmm. He says, intelligent people hear something or learn something and then go apply it immediately. That's the sign of an intelligent person right. or species. Whereas someone who's less intelligent just theorizes and learns and learns, but there's never any application to it. Those were his words. I'm not saying, I'm not here to dictate or, you know, decide who's intelligent and who's not. It's just an interesting concept of uh, maybe a good measure of intelligence is people who can effectively take what they've learned and apply it. Yeah. Across the animal kingdom. Yeah. I, I, believe I heard that too. I, I think, I think there's some truth to that for sure. Like if you actuate something really quickly and you, you hear something or learn something and then are able to apply it and go do it, um, successfully, you figured out, you learned, you, you did it. If you right. hear something and then mess up again and hear the right way and then mess up again, hear the right way, mess up again and mess up again. Right. Maybe you're not quite getting it. Which is where the argument comes, you know, you sometimes see this, at least I do see this argument online. People say, you can't just, you know, sit at home and listen to podcasts or watch YouTube. Uh, You have to, like, that stuff's useless. You just have to go out and do stuff. I see a very, people take a very uh, one-sided approach to it, and I get what they're saying. But it's true, like, you can't just, you can get caught up in, oh, I've read 10 books this month. Well, did you apply any of the stuff? Or did you, is there just this sense of accomplishment because you've read 10 books, right? Like trying to hit targets as opposed to yeah, maybe a reading less, but applying more. Yeah. Y- yeah. It's, it's, it's potentially a, a method of bypassing, right? Like not, perfect, actually, yeah. not yeah. actually doing the th- hard thing. And you describing about the books kind of just reminds me of like, I think the best example would be reading tons of self-help books, but still not actually. Right. I think that's what arguments working, get at. Working through. It's like, well, I'm doing the thing. Stuff. I'm, 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 I'm acquiring knowledge. I'm doing the thing. It can be like, a, it could be a farce if nothing or all for nothing, but you can get tricked into this sense of. I am doing the work. Yeah. Or I, I'm, or I'm healed or I'm fixed or I, I'm an expert because I did the, I read the thing. Right. And this is where we get into, I think we've talked about it before, not an original idea, of course, but that direction is more important than getting the outcome. Right. It's just like, Hey, like, so you got the knowledge now from a source, like just kind of head in that direction. That's where the uncovering happens. You yeah. don't need to get it perfect or absolutely bang on immediately after the learning phase, but just head in that direction. We all know that's the, kind of the sense of direction we need to go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think that's great. And I think understanding, understanding too, I'm reflecting back on everything I've said and, and I want to just reiterate that it's, it's not the same for everyone. Like these are my checkpoints in terms of my photography journey and do I still enjoy it and why everyone might have a different thing. It might solely be the meditative piece for some of you where it's like, I don't care one cent about money or making a job or even improving my craft. The reason I do this and I love it is because I'm out in nature or uh, I'm traveling or I'm taking photos of macro little toys that I set up in a certain way. 
like whatever it is that makes you happy i think that's the the thing to really hold on to and 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 stick with and those are your checkpoints that it's still working and it's still worth your time um i don't i don't want to have anyone think that like the only me- the only method is if you're making money or the only measure of success is are you making money or did you get a job or right. uh, are you are you are you growing did you make a business yet you don't have an llc then you suck no. right that that's that's definitely not the case that's just something that i find kind of fun and have done before with other things and i like it. i like it that's just part of it um mm-hmm. for me for me not for everyone uh i did want to touch on that i think it's important we we kind of glance over the uh the plateau part well before we get into that yeah, let's revisit sorry. that in a second though because what you've just talked about is kind of a segue a little bit Mm -hmm. you mentioned early in the episode that part of the reason you liked like and liked photography is because it provided movement i think you used the example of it got you traveling got you out of the house in nature doing all those things right yeah i like the idea of our primary focuses so in this instance photography having the secondary and tertiary benefits that weren't the prime focus but that arise so for example starting a podcast makes you a better speaker because you know people are listening photography makes me pay more attention to details and things running helps me sleep better i think it's important to notice not necessarily before you start the, the primary thing of focus, but as it's happening, what else is this doing for me? How else is this adding to me as a person or improving my life? Yeah. I joked today with the doctor. He came in and he said, so uh, do you leave an active life? And I looked at him and I went, I'm a photographer and I have a husky. What do you think? Like, <laughs> I was kidding. He's like, but whoa, this guy's badass. This guy's ten, <laughs> intense. Holy. No, but he's like, we're done with the physical. You have yeah, yeah, I'm scared. Perfect health. I am nervous. You look great. Uh no, but <laughs> I kid, but exactly what you're saying, Seth. Like when I when I adopted my dog about a year ago, mm-hmm. I don't think I realized that. Like I realized in my head, I'm going to have to exercise this dog, but I didn't realize it was like husky exercise, like miles a day. And whether I get out on a bike and ride with him to make it happen faster or have to go for two to five miles, depending on how warm it is, like it's happening every day. Otherwise, yeah, I can just tell he's miserable and I feel guilty because I'm able to do it, you mm-hmm. know? So, uh, I can't tell you how many more steps I have this year than I would have had, but I know it's in in the thousands. And when it's all said and done, that makes me feel better in terms of like, wow, I wanted this for X, Y, and Z, but it also gave me like a a really active year. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. And then you bask in that, you, you sit back and you appreciate and you're grateful for all those things that the primary focus added you know the right. the initial intent was i want to have a companion for myself and my son and i want to provide love to a, an animal that maybe needs rescuing and then all these other things happen too and it allows you to be so much more appreciative for the original thing or the original idea or what have you and i think it's right. important that people recognize that with photography it's not just about pictures or video. It's right. this is this is allowing me to express myself. This is allowing me to meet more people. This is getting me out of the house. I'm exploring countries I never would have dreamed I've been to. I met my partner uh through this. I started a business. It's mm-hmm. it's I think more about how is this rounding out your life? And 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 to dwell on that regularly. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point. 
and I'm I'm glad you brought it up because it, it it really it really has opened up a whole bunch of things, and it's really interesting to me. Just more interesting than anything else is like I like laugh at it sometimes, like <laughs> like this. I had no idea where this was going, and it's opened up so many things. So uh, eternally grateful for that, and I, I that again to the first question do you still like it yeah because there's such an unknown um i've experienced such an unknown in the first five years that i can only imagine what the next five would bring or 10 or 15 or 20 uh and i feel like i'm rounding into a healthy place with it too you've done this many times and it's impressed me i feel like you've gone on vacation in the last year or two and you're like i'm not even bringing my camera or like I'm bringing one lens and I'm like, dude, what? You're going like because I was still in that like new obsessed phase. And I think that's a healthy approach to be able to like really appreciate it for what it is and what it needs to be and not let it over consume your life and keeping the balance, the life, passion, work balance in in your everyday life and being able to like put it down and know that mm-hmm. you still have it and you still love it. And like this vacation's for this, like what's my intention on this vacation? It's not to be obsessed with getting the next shot. Like I don't need to do that. And I think that's a really healthy place to be. And I feel like that's where I'm getting to. That's good. That's good. And I think part of what you've described is because I am unwilling to sacrifice certain things for photography, for the podcast, for you for yeah. people I work for. There are just some things I will absolutely not budge on. Right. And call me stubborn, but that is what it is. And people who listen to this know that that's my health and mental wellness. I want eight hours of sleep. I want mm-hmm. whole foods every day. I want an active lifestyle. And if other things can not happen because of that, that's fine with me. And that's been been and is still a daily practice of, hey man, you can't do it all. I can't tell you the amount of times I've gone to bed at night having worked so hard, totally gassed. And the thing that's eating at me is like, but we didn't get to that thing. And that's hard to fight. Mm -hmm. And so I am constantly at war with, you cannot do everything without sacrificing the things I just described. If if you want five hours of sleep, I mean, sure. But then walking backwards and being like, "Mm, zooming out, what does five hours of sleep every day for the week do for me long-term? I can see how much worse I'll be personally. So it helps. Yeah. It helps to be like, nah, not doing that. Right. Yeah, that's good. Good stuff. Plateauing plateauing i i think uh, a cruel trick of learning any skill is this plateau period and we probably have all been there where we feel like oh there's fast learning in the beginning and if you stick with it there's a really fast there's a nice uptick to uh the learning stock if you will it's just it's really rising and then at some point you realize Oh, like I know as much as I can know right now without working much harder. And you get to a point where it's like just kind of your skill levels out a tad. It might rise and fall a little bit, whatever, but it's pretty level and you are where you are and you sit in that for a while. You enjoy it. It's fun. You get to like, let's use the letter grade system. You're, you're at a C plus and you're like, this is fun. I was at an F when I started. So now I'm a C plus. This is pretty great. But to get to a B, you have to either put yourself in some sort of discomfort and push yourself, get out of that box and fail a little bit to get up to that B level. And that takes a little bit of courage. And I feel like that's where a lot of people can drop off or quit, where it's like, oh, it was, it was easy to get to the C plus level, but... To get any further is going to take some work. And I don't know. I don't know if Not I want to do it. Not just work, time. I feel like the gap time, from yeah. F to D is mm-hmm. small and requires 
some effort. And then the gap from D to C is longer in duration and requires more effort. And then yep. from C to B, the duration to get there is even longer. Yes. And it's uh, more effort. And then you get to like A minus, an A, an A plus. And those yeah. things require so much effort to have such small gains. And that's why you yeah. get into the law of diminishing returns. Right. And I, I think that's, that's great. You get like, it takes the same amount to get from a 90 to a 91, same amount. Like, it might take years As it did to, to get to a from 40 to 70. Right. It might take years and years and years to move up a, move up a level and it might be slow and frustrating, but you're also, you're, you're functioning at like an A level, A minus yeah. level. So you're, you're able to do really well and you're able to sit back on that a bit and, and kind of just enjoy it for a while. And then the question becomes, do you want to keep going or you can get this sort of negative feedback that you're not improving anymore, but that's maybe in comparison to when you first started, especially right. for those of you that are just starting out or like a year in or two in, don't be surprised that it gets feels, it feels stagnant, but then you discover Photoshop. Maybe you were just in Lightroom the whole time and then you discover Photoshop and it takes you up a different level in terms of your skill level and what you can do. And now you're, you're spending hours and hours and hours in Photoshop and you've just developed that skill. So now you're at a, you're at a B plus, you just jumped up again, but now, now what? Now you're, now you're there and you can kind of dig, dig apart and, and sort of plateau and stay in a, in a steady holding pattern for a bit where it might be discouraging where you're like, ah, oh, I'm just, I'm not as good as everyone else and people are better and I can't get there. But you just, if you keep going at it, you get these surprise little upticks and I've seen it in uh, almost anything that I've tried to do and, and gotten past those plateaus where it's like out of nowhere, uh, like, oh, uh, I, I never could do that on guitar. Now I can, now it sounds pretty good. Huh? That's weird. Just, I guess it's hours of practice and that's eventually I had the dexterity to do so. Okay. Or video, you know, really putting together a really nice narrative where you're like, wow, that's really succinct and tells a story. And I'm really proud of the cinematography. This is the best work I've ever done. Like bar none. You, you get up, you, you jump to these little spots seemingly sometimes out of nowhere. Sometimes it's purposeful work, like adding a new skill to the toolbox, like Photoshop or Premiere or new equipment or lenses or a new skill like drone piloting or something like that. Um, that just levels you up. But I think as you get better, Seth, you said it perfectly, those plateaus take longer and more work and it can be discouraging because of the quick rise in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So the slope changes, the Delta for all our math friends, the nerd. Delta, right? It's, it's <laughs> the, the slope is if you just draw like tangent lines, it, yeah, it's not as steep. Right. So Know that, know that going into it again, especially all the new people out there know that going into it, that it starts off easier and then gets tough, but that's not, that shouldn't be discouraging. That's completely normal. And it, it's almost fun. It's almost fun. Like, Oh, I'm at a, I'm at a plateau spot. Let's, uh, I gotta, I gotta add something. I gotta add either time or a little more practice or push myself a little bit harder because I feel like I'm just doing the same old thing. So to answer our question, which I posed to you earlier, in the medium term, short term, if you're staying the same, you're not getting worse. That's what have been, that would have been my answer anyways. Yeah. I think I that that's silly. If you're staying the same, you're, you're staying the same. And I feel like right. that over a long term, still not going backwards, but if we're people who are striving for improvement, the, the way it's worded answers itself. But, but what you've just described is perfect to understand that the plateaus are necessary to ask the question that you literally just said, okay, what now? What now? Right. And not always just being so focused on what's next, what's next, what's next. Relishing a little bit and okay, I got here a little bit higher up where I was higher up in the sense of own your own personal achievement, not looking around at others. And okay, yeah. there's, I think, and the other thing too is like, think about professional elite athletes. Let's use 
marathon runners because more familiar with that. Going from a five hour marathon time to a three and a half hour marathon time as an amateur would take a decent amount of time and a decent amount of effort, but can probably be done in a few years. Going from a 220 marathon, like elites are running, to around the two hour mark, which is what people are trying to break for, uh, as a new world record. These people have nutritionists, they have running coaches, physio, their nutrition is dialed in, all to get a couple of seconds faster. I think that's the point we're making. Right. And uh, you brought up sports and uh, do you guys know that I like golf? But let me tell you this story. (laughs) Tiger Woods, I'm not sure the year, I think it was 2001, just after coming in and, and winning more than like anyone in those four years, decided to retool his entire swing. So he's beating everyone. But he himself sensed, I think I've plateaued and I have a few mistakes in my swing that I think I need to improve if I want to be the best that I can be. And I realized that I might be set back for a little bit. And I think that's important to know that that that's an option too. Like when you are plateauing, there's possibility that you have to plat- you have to start over in some things. You have to retool some stuff. Or if you're putting your time into premiere, your photography might suffer, right? Like you're, you're, you're changing the direction. You're changing the focus to make an overall better photographer. You might lose some skills for a bit. You might backtrack trying to figure some stuff out, trying to take some chances with the hopes of I'm going to leapfrog my old self to get better. And I think that's an important part too. And I felt that with many things in terms of like, all right, in order to, I'm, I'm decent where I am, but in order to get better, maybe I have to take this course and it's going to be, you know, eight hour, eight hours out of my month, but I'm going to take this course, which means I'm not going to be able to go shooting. Like, but so my, my skills might get worse. Like my exposure, where are my buttons, knowing the dexterity of my camera and knowing my camera really well, but I'm learning certain other things that when I put it all together, now I've just leveled up. So I think that lesson too, from, from good old tiger is knowing like the potential of yourself and, and recognizing where there might be some weaknesses, uh, and, and building those up despite your strengths and knowing that the end result might be this better, more well-rounded photographer. Yeah, well said. Very well said. Thanks, dude. So, to summarize, do we even need to? (laughs) To summarize, why do we we still like photography? I think... uh, We just said it for an hour and 20 minutes, why we like it. It gives us so So, much stuff. If you need a summary... It really does. Rewind. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I'll tie it in a little bow. I think emotionally, more importantly than anything, like, dude... Not to be sappy, Seth, oh, but God. you, oh, you and the ability to have these conversations week after week, the consistency it builds, like the, the, the dedication practice, the to do yeah. it, the practice for discipline. These are all things that have been awesome surprises to me from the beginning. Right. Like this is nothing I was goal oriented in doing. This has all been like a a surprise that I've kept. And even when you asked me to do this, I said, like, I just want to, I want to keep that flow open. Like I'm not, I'm, I don't want to push for anything. I will agree to dedication. I will agree to discipline, but I'm not, I, I, that's what I want. That's what I'm loving. And that's what's working. And that's, what's really fun. And I think the people that I've met and like the ability to share art forms and cool moments in my life is something that is, is new. I'm, I'm older and this is relatively new and it's, it's been really, really nice. So yes, I still like photography. Yes. I'm still excited to go out and shoot and try new things. And I think that's the point. And when that's, not happening, then it's going to be a, it'll be a problem. But right now I still like it and it's awesome. Very well said, man. Well, I, I enjoyed speaking with you weekly as well. 
Uh, appreciate you. Appreciate listeners. If you're liking what you're hearing, leave us a rating review on Spotify and Apple podcasts. We're going to do these every, uh, every week for free until we don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Seth, what do you think about an episode where we go? What, what don't you like about photography? Oof, that might get some more traction because I guess negativity bias, but I don't like, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to sound sure ranty and whiny and that's no, kind of, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's aspects to it that people can relate with. It's not. Okay. Maybe we go the opposite direction. Sometimes it's, episode. It's, I sometimes think we'll do that. That's good. Be real. Let's just, that's let's good. We'll go real. We'll go the opposite direction and you can, uh, subscribe and follow the podcast on Apple and Spotify so that you get those notifications when episodes like that come out and, uh, you can see them on YouTube as well. Link to all those in the episode description. And uh, till next time, man. Take care. See ya.